ever get that feeling where you just wanna kick back and do nothing at all? We all do that sometimes. It's like when you have a million things to do but all you wanna do is binge watch your favorite show and spend hours scrolling through social media. It's tempting, I know. But here's the thing, giving into that temptation may feel good in that moment, but it won't get you any closer to your goals. So now what if you could be like Saitama, the ridiculously strong bald man from the anime One Punch Man, or Sang Jin Woo, the most powerful hunter from solo leveling. These guys are the pinnacle of strength, but guess what, they were not always like that. Now I understand that they are just fictional characters and you can't actually become superhuman like them in real life, but still, you can learn a lot from them. Just imagine Saitama as a regular office worker, bored, maybe a little out of shape. He could have just stayed that way, right? But no, he decided to completely transform himself. He set a crazy goal to be the strongest hero ever. Now, his training methods were a little unorthodox, like 100 sit-ups, 100 push-ups, 100 squats and a 10 km run every single day. 100 push-ups, 100 sit-ups and 100 squats! <laughs> Then a 10 kilometer run! Do it every single day! But the point is, he pushed himself like crazy. So much so that he even lost all his hair. He didn't let laziness win over him. Jinwoo's story is not so different. Initially the weakest hunter around, constantly on the point of being killed in the deadly dungeons. But instead of giving up, he embraced the harsh reality. He understood he had to get stronger and that meant serious discipline. He trained relentlessly even when fear or doubt crept in. He pushed his limits again and again, just like Saitama. Now they both could have easily quit. Saitama's training resume was brutal and Sang Jin Woo was frequently caught in life threatening situations. But they had a mindset shift. They realized that greatness did not come easily. You must be willing to suffer and push yourself past your comfort zone. Listen, Genos, you have to keep doing it, no matter how difficult it gets. It took me a full three years to get this strong. We may not all aspire to be the strongest hero or hunter, but we all have ambitions. Perhaps you want to learn a new language, master a skill or get in a better shape. It all starts with the decision to push yourself and resist the temptation to sit on the couch. Now imagine your life as a ship sailing towards success. You are the captain and your willpower is the wind that moves your ship forward. Without setting a course and pushing forward, you will drift aimlessly. So disciplining yourself is like being that captain who steers the ship in the right direction, no matter the challenges. In our everyday lives, disciplining ourselves means pushing beyond the ordinary to achieve the extraordinary. It is about confronting those moments when you have to make tough decisions or take actions that scare us. You know those moments when we would rather procrastinate than face the challenge. But the thing is, success lies in taking action, even when it is difficult. Now how many times have you heard that voice in your head that whispers, let's go tomorrow, right when you should be hitting the gym or something similarly important. That's your limbic system talking. Dr. Andrew Huberman, an American neuroscientist came up with this term called limbic friction to describe the struggle between our emotion and our logic. Imagine your brain like a seesaw. On one side sits the limbic system, the emotional part that craves instant gratification. It's like a little kid who wants candy for breakfast. On the other side is the prefrontal cortex, the logical adult that knows that healthy choices are better in the long run. According to Huberman, when you want to be disciplined and exercise but the couch seems way more appealing, that's limbic friction at work. Your limbic system is pushing for comfort while your prefrontal cortex argues for the long-term benefits of exercise. Further build this thing about leaning into friction. And this is a term that isn't really scientific but that I decided to coin because this idea of limbic friction. That when we're very tired and we need to be in action or when we're very stressed and we need to perform in a more calm and controlled way, there's friction on both sides. Getting out of bed when we're exhausted, hard, very hard often. Leaning into action in a calm and deliberate way when we're freaking out, like going to give a public lecture if one has fear of public speaking, also hard. So this limbic friction, and David just seems to seek what I call limbic friction in every domain of life. This is exactly how I feel when I write the scripts for my YouTube videos. Editing and shooting are interesting for me, but writing the script for the video feels like an extra effort. That's my limbic system telling me to skip the script. 
but I have already discovered a solution to overcome this limbic friction and that is I push myself to sit down right even when I don't feel like it. That's like physically pushing the adult on the seesaw down. It may not feel great at first but once I get started the words begin to flow and before I know it I have a script ready in front of me. This is a perfect example of conquering limbic friction. Remember even when you don't feel like doing something just showing up and taking that first step can be all it takes to break through the limbic friction and get things done. So how can we develop this discipline? It all starts with making small but intentional choices every day. Think about something you have been putting off or a goal you want to accomplish. Maybe it's exercising regularly or even just cleaning your room. Now let's break it down into smaller tasks. Instead of saying I will work out for an hour every day, try something simpler like I will go for a 10 minute walk every morning. These small steps makes it easier to get started and build the momentum. Next, we need to tackle procrastination and laziness. These are like the hidden obstacles that can derail us from our goals. One way to combat them is by building habits. Habits are powerful tools for success and by developing positive habits and breaking the old ones, you can live a life that is consistent with your goals and values. Plus, routine is also essential. Having a structured routine helps you to stay on track and makes it easier to stick to your habits. So try to establish a daily routine that includes time for your goals whether it's exercising, studying or even cleaning your room. You don't have to go Saitama level crazy. Stay humble just as Sang Jin Woo might. Maybe dedicate 15 minutes a day to your goal and gradually increase the time as you get more comfortable. In conclusion, disciplining ourselves is not about becoming superheroes like Saitama or Sang Jin Woo but rather adopting their mindset of unwavering determination and pushing past our comfort zones. We are always tempted to procrastinate or give in to laziness, but by understanding the concept of limbic friction and learning to overcome it, we can take control of our actions and steer our lives in the direction of our goals. So the next time you hear that voice in your head urging you to procrastinate, remember the power of discipline. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.